Today's story might sound fake, but is 100% true. While horror movies can surely keep us on our toes or even terrify us, it's the true scary stories from history that really digs down deep within us and just seems to stay there. Whether if it's true crime, paranormal, or just something so strange and unexplainable, there is just something about true stories that fictional ones just cannot resonate with. There are a few stories about residents in this small town in southern Illinois who were being stalked and terrorized by this unknown dog-like human creature. And one of those stories is about a father who was trying to protect his family one night from this unknown creature that was trying to get inside their home. He would even claim that he shot and wounded this creature. This is the case of the Enfield Monster. Hi, I'm Zach and welcome to Rooted Expeditions. If you're a fan of the abandoned historical and strange locations, then you are in the right place. Hit that thumbs up and let's dive into the story of what happened on that dreadful night. Now to better understand the story, we need to understand the history behind this location. The southern portion of Illinois is known by some as the Devil's Kitchen. This strange name came from the Native Americans in an attempt to describe to early settlers the strange sights and sounds that occurred throughout the area. Back then, many people learned to avoid these strange and mysterious parts of Illinois. It is said by many that anything is possible in the Devil's Kitchen. From paranormal sightings, mysterious animals, and weird and scary sightings of monsters. There have been many stories that have came out of this area in this state, and this is one of those stories. One evening in 1973 in the small town of Enfield, which is located in the southern part of Illinois, it was a chilly night on April 25th, just as the sun was going down, illuminating property, which was just enough light to make out the surroundings. And this is where the McDaniel family lived. There was these two young children who were inside their home and they ended up hearing a noise that was coming from outside. So they would go up to the window and they would peek out the window, scanning with their eyes across the land or across the yard to see if they could see anything. And sure enough, they saw what this, what looked like this weird and strange looking animal lurking around. The animal, I guess, saw the two children looking out the window and as soon as this animal spotted them, it would start to make its way to the house. The children, terrified, would run and lock the doors and all the windows in the house. And the animal seemed to try to get inside the house by scratching on the door. The children would run to their father, who was named Henry, and the children would tell him that there was this strange and scary animal outside trying to get inside the home. They would describe this animal as a dog-looking thing, but... It kind of looked like a human, but it wasn't a human. It had these glowing eyes with three legs, small arms, was gray, and it even stood upright. But the father would look at the children and try to make sense of it. But to Henry, this sounded crazy. So he just chalked it up as nothing serious and thought that this was just probably their active childhood imagination kicking in. He would open the front door of their home and looked outside and by this time it was already so dark outside that he really couldn't see too far out from the house. So Henry not seeing anything outside to be concerned about, he would close the front door and he would tell the children that there was nothing to worry about and it was getting late and they needed to go to bed. And from there, Henry and his wife would retire for that evening. But that would quickly change later that night when Henry was in bed sleeping and was awoken by this strange scratching sound coming from outside their home as if something or someone was scratching on the side of the house. He didn't waste any time. He grabbed his gun and his flashlight and would head to the front door of their home. And when he got to that front door, he would open it up, looked outside, scanning the yard with his flashlight. And as he was scanning with his flashlight, he saw something between two rose bushes by the side of his home. There it was, almost like a human body just standing there and it just looked like what the children were describing earlier. Henry would raise his gun and fire four shots at the creature, and out of those four shots, this thing just hissed like some wild cat. 
he knows for sure he at least hit this thing once out of those four shots. But as soon as he fired those shots, the creature ran off towards the railway embankment, off to the side of their property. Henry would later state that he watched this thing jump 50 feet in three jumps and was out of sight. As all of this was going on, his wife awoke and called the police. When police would later arrive, it was too late, but upon searching the property, they would find scratches on the screen door as well as footprints in the dirt next to their home. See, what's strange about these footprints is, is that it looked like dog prints, but it had six toe pad prints. But police would not really find any clues that pointed to any unusual creature except for those weird footprints. He would tell police that this thing, it had three legs on it and short body and two little short arms and two pink eyes as big as flashlights. Police would state that Henry was sober and very aware of the situation, but without any real hard proof, there was just nothing anybody could do about this situation. Henry and the children were terrified that this animal or creature might come back and seek revenge from him shooting and wounding it. This story of the McDaniels family incident would quickly make the local newspaper but many people didn't want to believe their story. Henry would report two more sightings shortly after that, but police not being able to see any hard evidence would threaten him with jail time if he just wouldn't stop calling them about this creature. Gosh, that's gotta be really hard when you, when something's happening and no one's believing you. To think that there, there was no one there for him. Okay, moving on. Just no one in town believed Henry or his family and they became almost outcast, looked upon as crazy and just making up stories. But Henry would stand by his scary story. He would say in an interview, and I quote, if they do find it, they will find more than one, and they won't be from this planet. I can tell you that. Not long after Henry went public with his testimony of this encounter about the infilled monster, other eyewitness claims began to surface, almost as these victims felt a relief that they were not the only ones experiencing these events or experiencing these creatures. Till this day, many people have tried to hunt this animal down and even capture photographs of this thing or creature, but no explanation has been uncovered for this creepy story that this town holds. Here's a little bit of history for you. Hit that thumbs up. Peace, I love you, and as always, God bless.